Animal Farm by George Orwell is one of the greatest books ever written. First released in 1945, it's an allegory for the Russian Revolution and the Soviet Union, with animals representing iconic historical figures like Stalin, Trotsky, Marx, and such. It is probably one of the most well-known political satire pieces out there. However, you probably don't need me to tell you all this. You've probably already heard of or read this book at some point in your life, maybe in school or a book club or something. However, there have been two film adaptations of Animal Farm, one from 1954 and one from 1999. And they're pretty interesting, despite being based on the same source material, they actually differ quite a bit. There is also apparently a new Animal Farm in the works which Andy Serkis will be attached to, but I've seen stuff online about that film for years and nothing big has come from it, so you can be the judge on when or if that film will ever see the light of day. The 1954 adaptation was hand-drawn animated, while the 1999 one is a mix of live action, puppets, and real animals. Weirdly enough, both of these films are arguably meant for kids, which is kinda strange. Animal Farm is a very dark and violent book, and the political themes are probably not gonna be understood by most kids unless they've heard about communism and Eastern Europe history. Maybe I'm wrong though. The 1954 film will be the one we talk about first. I know Wikipedia considers this to be an adult animated film. I always found that term kind of strange. When you think of adult animated film, you think South Park, but when you just think of an adult film, well, you think porn. This doesn't really give off the impression of a strictly mature film. You'll have the laughs of your life. Yeah, a regime that caused the deaths of millions is certainly something I find funny. This movie is also kind of a fucking psyop. Yeah. The CIA actually funded a portion of this movie. They also allegedly made changes to the script as well. Considering the time period this movie came out, it's safe to say this is a propaganda piece. I don't even know if the directors knew the CIA funded this. This movie is a British production. To the world we all know, which may or may not be the best world possible, once thriving and fruitful, the farm and its owner, Mr. Jones, had fallen on evil days. Beset by problems of his own making, Mr. Jones had turned to drink. They drive me to drink! The animation and backgrounds here are actually pretty good. I guess when the CIA makes a movie, they want it done right. So then we see Farmer Jones, who is a bit of a big asshole. He's an allegory of Russian Tsar Nicholas II. <laughs> Yep, there's the beginning of the animal abuse, better get used to it. We then meet Old Major, who is voiced by, well, actually all the animals in this film are voiced by Maurice Stenham. He's meant to represent Karl Marx, the founder of communism. What was that? No. No, it wasn't, Mr. Jones. My dear friend. I have lived a long life. I won't be with you much longer. And before I die, there's something I want to tell you. Epstein didn't kill- Whatever we produce is taken from us. Our children are born to cold and hunger. I guess that's how you say shut the fuck up and pig. Also, what's up with his face? Do you know what the future holds for you? They really went and drew a 3D cutting board with all those different angles just for that. Overthrow this evil tyrant, and we shall be rich and free! I have to say, Maurice Dedham does a good job with all of the voices in this film. He's good and distinct too, especially his portrayal of Old Major, really able to come off as a seasoned veteran with years of wisdom despite his brief appearance. Yeah, I don't really understand that fade either. Now and forever, all animals are equal! The Beast of England song had lyrics in the book, but here it's just animal noises. I guess the CIA only has so much money. 
This movie does differ from the book in a few small ways, and one really big way, and I will get to those as they appear. I suppose it kinda gets the point across, but I don't know. I'd prefer if this was an actual song. Jesus Christ, he wasn't fucking joking about not having much time left. If that damn cat from earlier stalled a bit longer, Old Major would've just croaked mid-speech. Unless there are other things at play here. You know, on the topic of heart attacks and this movie, the CIA actually did create a heart attack gun back in the 70s. It would be a gun that shoots frozen water and shellfish toxins and would always kill its victims via a heart attack. Somehow the sound of animals crying is what wakes up Jones and not the song they were just doing. The animals rise up against Jones with their eyes becoming fucking bloodshot in the process. God damn, I feel bad for any kids in the 1950s that saw this in theaters. Jones ends up rallying some townspeople to help retake his farm. Why was that cut off? It ends up being hilarious. Imagine if I added a gunshot. A big fight happens with a surprising lack of sound. I know older cartoons used music for sounds instead of straight up foley, but it still feels kind of empty. How did he shoot that many rounds out of a double barrel shotgun? God, you can tell British people made this, they don't know shit about guns. Okay, come on, that pig should be missing a chunk of his body from that. And so, almost before they realized it, the animals had fought and won. And Farmer Jones wrote it off as a business expense or something, I guess. The animals light all of Jones' shit on fire and yet again sing the animal song. <laughs> hey now, that's an antique. This represents his taste for blood he gets later in the film or something, I don't know. So this movie really takes its time with the pacing, so be ready to watch a bunch of pissed off looking animals walking around a lot. It's not a particularly long movie either, at around 70 minutes. The animals were all agreed that Jones's house was no place for them. It's good they came to that conclusion after trashing it. Look, out of context, an adult taking a group of children into a secret room looks really bad. Snowball led the other animals in organizing a new society, which they now named Animal Farm. Really must have spent a lot of time coming up with that one. No animal shall sleep in a bed. No animal shall drink alcohol. More like fucking Mormon Farm, am I right? Four legs good, two legs bad. Admittedly, this is where we differ from the source material. In the book, the rules didn't specifically use the words four legs good, two legs bad. The sheep were the ones who used that chant. The rules were a bit more verbose about it. All animals are equal. I think you mean all animals are equal. equal. Tending farm by themselves posed problems for the animals, but the pigs could think of a way around every difficulty. <laughs> Okay, is that cow really being milked? Because that face makes me think something else is going on. The success of their efforts delighted everyone, including sly Napoleon and his constant companion, fat pink squealer. He doesn't look particularly fatter than the other pigs. Okay guys, we get it, they're working. We're only like three chapters into this book, so can we get a move on? Molly the horse does not appear to be in this movie, perhaps because they didn't have any female voices. She was meant to represent the middle class. Also, Moses the Raven was missing, who was an enemy of the pigs because he would constantly talk about a place called Sugar Candy Mountain, which would take away the animal's desire for revolution. He was meant to represent the Russian Orthodox Church, and was eventually sent away to represent the state-mandated atheism the Soviet Union would enforce. There does appear to be a raven of some kind in this movie, but he doesn't say anything. The pigs then send the birds to spread the knowledge of Animal Farm to help inspire revolutions in other farms. We're unimpressed by tales of peace and plenty. Better keep those stories of animalism away of the farms in Chile, or the birds are gonna get a fun helicopter ride. 
Well, I guess they're birds, so it wouldn't really end up bad for them. But they think of something. Snowball felt that education was the animal's next necessity. Some of the animals were brighter than others, of course. This movie doesn't explain how the pigs themselves learn to read and write. The book at least gives some kind of explanation with them using books found in the farmhouse. Snowball set himself to solve the problem of power on the farm. Gotta get the Xbox running somehow. And so did Napoleon. <laughs> that was a pretty badass transition, using the different meanings of the word power. He was not alone. Just this Batman looking pig. After using the now fully grown dogs to chase Snowball away, Napoleon becomes the leader of Animal Farm. Now the movie kind of gives off the impression that the dogs eventually caught and finished off Snowball, while the book he's just chased away. I guess technically this version is more accurate because Snowball represents Trotsky who was assassinated by Stomp. We get another working montage, really padding out those 70 minutes. One evening, after working long and late, as usual, Boxer and Benjamin made a curious discovery. I mean, it is a nice house. But they remembered a law against beds, but obviously they were mistaken. But you know, what's wrong with sheets? I would have changed it to no animals should sleep in a waterbed or something. I mean, the animals are just going to believe whatever you tell them anyway. All those ungrateful beasts of yours. I want to know how Jones even has a liver by now. Anyway, where are they going to buy the things they need? And a shop trader named Wimper was just the sort to do something about it. Geez, I am honestly amazed he had this much faith in literal animals being able to turn a profit for him. You hens are to have the honor of making the first contribution, all your eggs. I don't know how they're expecting to repopulate. I should mention this movie censors all of the graphic violence in the book, so if you want to see images of dogs tearing out animals' throats with blood spraying everywhere, well, you're going to be disappointed. There are traitors among us! No. No, no! Don't think about it! Who else is guilty? Stand up and confess! I bet the sheep just forgot to flush the toilet one time or something. Face the wall. Now that's being resourceful. The revolution is now complete. We have no more use for that song. Seeing it is now forbidden. Under penalty of death. Mr. Fun Police here. Hmm, Animal Farm seems to be making money. Uh, no, I'm afraid that wasn't the case. So the rest of the farmers try once again to get back Animal Farm. You know, where's the government in all this? When the trees start speaking sheep. you think having guns would be more effective. Oh shit, blood. Jeez, even Australia fights wars against animals better than these guys. One bite per apple? No wonder your economy's gonna go down the shitter. Napoleon canonically fucks. It looked as though Boxer were dead, but he wasn't. Boxer's hurt bad. We'll never work again. What do we do? What do you mean you don't know? You're the leader here. Only Benjamin suspected it wasn't an ambulance. <laughs> they moved that couple thousand pound horse pretty quickly, didn't they? put a horse skull and crossbones on their truck. These guys do not fuck around. Then we get arguably the most fucked up scene in the movie.
I was with him right to the end. His last words were, Forward, comrades! Long live Napoleon! As for the wicked rumor that Boxer was sold to a glue factory, our beloved leader would never do that. At this point, the animals have had it with Napoleon. His pig run enterprise now had many of the frills of real civilization. And one fine day, pig delegates from far and wide arrived at Animal Farm to celebrate the coming of a new era. I really want to know how you say that sentence with a straight face. At this point, the movie kind of jumps the shark with this really bizarre imagery. It isn't as bad when you're reading it, but when you're actually seeing it, well, I mean, can a dog even get a driver's license? <laughs> There's the money shot right there. The animals then start to be reminded of humans with the pigs, although in the book they had humans at the table with them, which I feel like got the point across better. To the animals, it now seemed that their world was worse than ever for ordinary creatures. And another moment had come when they must do something about it. Didn't even need old Major to convince them this time. This is where the movie makes its biggest change with the book. In the book, it just ends with the pigs and humans essentially becoming the same and adding a hopeless ending. However, I guess the CIA really wanted to hammer in the communism bad message, so they tack on this ending where the animals rise up against the pigs. What happens afterwards? Do the animals find a new way of governing? You'll never know. Overall, it just kind of cheapens the impact of the ending. I mean, really? You really couldn't have went with an unhappy ending for once? It's an honest shame, because overall this movie is actually pretty faithful for the most part. Several aspects were removed, and this is a much more dumbed down experience over the original book, so don't watch this and expect to pass your test in school on the book because that ain't gonna work. Ah hell, you kids have chat GPT these days anyway. There are some cool details I like, such as the pigs and maybe sheep being the only animals that speak English for the most part with the rest of the animals only making their noises. This is also different from the book, but considering it's a much simpler retelling of Animal Farm, I'd say it works for the most part. Overall, not too bad of a movie and a pretty entertaining piece of propaganda. Now on to the 1999 film. This movie has a much larger cast than the original with actors like Kelsey Grammer, Ian Holm, Julia Lewis, Dreyfus, and Patrick Stewart all appearing. This was a made-for-TV film as well, but I'd still say it had an overall bigger budget than the original. No CIA money for this one. It's also about 20 minutes longer than the first. It was a storm of judgment. Oh, Blake is You're already seeing that 90s edge. This ain't your grandma's animal farm. So this movie starts taking place after the events of the book, which like, why? Seriously, stop trying to be all artistic and just tell the story. The poisonous cement which held Napoleon's evil dream together was being washed away. I could taste it in the water. Quite literally too, it seemed. The last movie took out characters, but this movie decides to add new ones. The main character is a dog named Jesse. Well, in the book, there were three dogs that only really existed to produce the puppies that Napoleon would eventually use as his private army. I guess the original Animal Farm or the book didn't really have a main character, but I don't know if making new ones is necessarily the right answer. <laughs> I just love laughing randomly as we ride in a cart. Also, the sun just starts shooting a slingshot at the sheep. Why? I guess we just gotta get the point across that humans are bad. Do that. No. They're having fun now, watch up. Yes, we're only playing, Ma. I just hope we get to the revolution soon so we don't have to be subjected to this damn acting. There's a meeting there. tonight. In the barn. Okay, Jesse, I'll be there. Really? That's the take you're gonna go with? And then, moving on. Don't go into detail about the meeting. Why even add the horse's line? Just have the dog say there's a meeting tonight. Or well, why not just scrap all that and just show the meeting and let the audience just assume that the animals knew about the meeting prior? So wait, if the animals already have a natural drive to stand up to Jones, then what's the point of Old Mage? The whole idea is that the animals didn't think there could be a way to stand up to their oppression. Thou shalt not kill. He was hurting Boxer. 
But no animal can ever attack a human. No human should ever hurt an animal. Good old CGI animal mouths from the 90s and 2000s, just like in Cats and Dogs and other such movies. I just love how the dog's face stays perfectly still while talking, and then the camera angle changes and the dog is moving their head around. Quick! She's coming! Quick! So can humans understand the animals or not? We haven't even gotten to the actual book material yet and I'm already confused. You know how I said the 1954 film oversimplifies the story? Well this is the exact opposite. We gotta apparently learn about Jones's horrible wife and all these evil rich snobs who look down on him. Like does anyone care? Was anyone dying to learn about what Jones was like? So we finally see Old Major who's portrayed as a really crappy looking puppet. That's one thing about this movie, and I guess it's just connected to the live action aspect. The animals all look like gross disgusting animals, especially the pigs that always have snot on them. It's distracting. I'm just trying to enjoy some political satire here. I've had a long life, and now it is my duty to pass on to you, such as I understand, of the nature of our lives. The old major voice isn't terrible. It doesn't give off the same level of age and power as the old voice, but it gets the job done. But God, does that puppet suck. His lip movements just look so fake. Looks like something from a theme park. We are slaughtered with hideous cruelty. No! Jesus! No! This movie definitely takes itself less seriously than the first one. The 1954 film, I suppose, possibly could have been meant for older viewers. But this one is pretty clearly for kids. To pay about the money I owe you. Yeah, my dear boy, just having a friendly drink. Don't want to spoil the occasion, do we? The bank is on to me, Mr. P. Guys, I don't give a shit about whatever Jones is dealing with. I really don't. Someone say ribbons. I could get ribbons. I could get anything. PS2 level CGI. You shouldn't care about looking pretty for humans. But I like looking pretty for humans. And I like when you don't shove the camera in the animals' faces to hide how cheap the puppets are. We'll have to stay over, Mr. J. Oh yeah, and this guy's wife is hitting on Jones for some reason. Beasts of the world, we shall unite. Rise up and ready for the fight. Soon or late, the day will be. When man's defeated and we are free. One thing I do like about this movie is the rendition of Beasts of England, albeit now it's Beasts of the World. For one thing, there are actually lyrics now, and the song sounds pretty good. It really does feel like an inspiring song, and it's effective. Defeated and we are free. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's definitely what Orwell wanted. Not enough fucking sex scenes in Animal Farm, it seems. You know, it kind of fits that they put sex scenes over the iconic old major speech. It's a fucking a classic book. Jones is probably still rock hard at this moment, too. Or, even worse, he's coming out and doing this with the full post-nut clarity. Jeez, I don't know which one's worse. In the original book, old major dies in his sleep, but I guess that just wasn't good enough. So we get this comedy gold. Old Major had been hit. Just backflips out the window and fucking dies. Like how many times did they have to try this until they got the take right? Did nobody look at this and think it looks fucking stupid? Because it does. Old Major up and dying mid speech was goofy, but like, you didn't have to frickin' try and outdo it. So the animals finally get to revolt. 17 minutes in. Take it. Here. Come on. I thought the problem was you guys not getting enough food. Mr. Jones, what about the animals? I'll let them rot. Yeah, let your livestock all starve. That's the best idea when your farm is already failing. Come on. We haven't fed all of yet, Mr. Jones. I need food. I'm very hungry. Okay, we get it. You haven't been fed. How many times are you going to repeat that? I thought we were trying to be stealthy here. Wait, do you mind? I'm trying to have my dinner. Why? I was saving that. The last movie had some comedy stuff too, but it wasn't as obnoxious about it as this movie is.
That was significantly less exciting than the fight scene in the first movie. Yeah, and also your farm is about to burn down. Maybe do something about that. The treatment of your animals has led them to seizing power. An uprising which could easily spread to all our farms. How is this more cartoonish than the actual cartoon? <laughs> Shut up. Okay, that's funny as shit. Can you read? Not yet, but I will learn. Another point I'll give this movie is explaining how the pigs learn to read and write. All right, now just hold still. Whoops. Oh, Lord. All right, I just need practice. Wow, neither of these movies were able to not make milking cows look weird as shit. Are you sure you're okay? Boxer, go with the others. I'll be fine. Hmm. If you're sure. I'm sure. I swear every single take in this movie is the first take. Like literally every single one. These actors were reading the lines for the first time as they were recording this. One thing I do not like about this movie is Napoleon. They make him way too silly in this and there's no real threat to him. The 1954 film made him come off as far more menacing and evil, which is meant to mimic the cruelty and suffering that Stalin caused during his regime. <laughs> <laughs> in this movie, Napoleon is just kind of like a mustache twirling type of evil. Again, it's more cartoony than the cartoon. Jeez, hold the camera still, man. It's like I'm watching a YouTube house tour. Whoa, look at that. Over here. Dear Lord, that's the worst CGI yet. That actually made my hair stand up when I first saw it. I will say, thankfully, they are able to mostly accurately transfer the rules from the book to the screen in this adaptation. Oh, Pincha, sit down. You can clearly see the dog look at the trainer commanding him to sit. All animals are equal! I think you mean all animals are e equal. Okay, I'm done. I swear on the sacred memory of old Major. To serve Napoleon before all others. Yeah, just take away the subtlety of what Napoleon did with the dogs. You know how in both the book and the old movie it was shocking when the dogs walked out and it became these brainwashed killing machines? Well, never mind that. We gotta show exactly how it happened. Are you gonna show the frickin' basic training next? We all worked together in the fields, and we were happy. Yeah, we can see that. This movie really can't go two seconds without explaining every little thing to the audience. All over in two weeks, I think you said, two months ago. This is what happens when a weak man is allowed to run a farm. On my farm, there are no weak men. But there are weak women. We haven't quite solved that one yet. Somehow they were able to get on the animal's property and bug the place. You know, the farm they just established has guard dogs. What the fuck are they feeding them for? The sadness will spread to the other animals. Mm, not if we distract them. Yeah. Yes, we're so evil. We'll let them calm down, then Squealer can explain. Thank you. Oh. I really think they make Snowball way too nice in this. I get he's supposed to be better than Napoleon and Squealer, but I don't know. I don't think Trotsky was necessarily a sweetheart just because he wasn't Stalin. It doesn't seem fair to me. I love milk and apples. Well, we all do. Mind you, Napoleon's always right. I'll talk to Jesse. She'll explain. As you can see, the dialogue just keeps getting better. What's this rubbish? It's not rubbish. I've heard my animals sound like that. There's a pattern to it. Like, it's a signal. A code. Something. And it's spreading. Well, fuck me. If you can get all that just from some animal sounds, we should get them on the D.B. Cooper case. So we finally get to see the humans versus animal war. Took long enough. Stovall Shiver is a great military strategist as he apparently thinks bird shit is comparable to bullets. Oh no, the animals are slowly walking at us. What shall we ever do? Wow, if only you guys had like guns or something. Well, they do eventually start to use the guns. It becomes a little too late. And again, significantly less exciting action than the animated version. 
I'd be willing to forgive the fact that it'd be more difficult to have a fight with animals and humans in live action over just drawing it if there wasn't 40 years of filmmaking experience and technological advancements between this film and the original one. This is war. The only good human is a dead one. One. Just one time I'd like to see a line delivery that makes me think they at least said, let's try and record that one again. We will celebrate this decisive day every October. Our farm is now Animal Farm. Napoleon, Napoleon, Napoleon! Napoleon, Napoleon! I do have to say, I like how Napoleon is able to manipulate the crowd and make himself appear to be the hero. That's actually surprisingly clever coming from this adaptation. This must be directed at feeding ourselves, arming ourselves, barricading our borders, and defending animalism! Can you please, just once, bring the camera away from the disgusting pig snouts, please? We must send our pigeons out! to spread the message of revolution! Yes. We will vote on it. I will say, animal political debates are far more civil than the human ones. You pig. Snowball. Are you aroused by that? So now we have the beginning of Napoleon's reign, which we already knew about because they told us about in the first scene in the movie. Oh, wait, wait. So could they not talk earlier? What the hell is going on? I can, talk. I can trade. You've actually managed to turn your father's prosperous farm into a debt-ridden, crumbling piece of rubbish. That I still want to be a trade partner with for some reason. You're finished around here, washed up, dead in the water. I think they are. So does this movie actually want us to feel bad for Jones? Why? What's the point? Seriously, what is the point? Jones is done with the story after he's exiled, yet this movie keeps trying to drag him back in. For what purpose? For what reason? Why do we need to sympathize with poor Farmer Jones? <laughs> I honestly don't know who's more cartoonish, the evil humans or the evil pigs. Because they're sitting at the table and laughing, just like men do, I guess. Off to bed with you. Did he just fucking teleport? Splendid. We will go into the house. Absolutely. After you, dear boy. Dear boy. Dear boy. Well, he's technically a black pig, so you can't call him that. The place where old Major had fallen. It's like a fucking crime scene. Here lies a pig who did a sweet ass backflip before he smacked into the ground and cracked his skull open. What a way to remember the guy. That'd be like if the Lincoln Memorial had half of Abraham Lincoln's head missing. That's a tidy load of hay, Mr. Napoleon. Dear boy. How can I help you, boy? This could prove to be a very profitable arrangement. Between ourselves, Mr. N. You already call him boy and now Mr. N? Napoleon, you don't have to deal with this white supremacist bullshit. So for some reason, this movie also wants to make Pilkington like the overall main villain of both stories? Again, why? Napoleon is a ruthless dickhead. Why do we need more villains? They are living in the house. No. Yes, and they're sleeping in the beds. No. no. You sound really upset over that. I managed to convince the animals to buy those rusty old silos I couldn't get rid of. I've never got a clue what they're doing. Wow, you managed to outsmart animals. You're such a genius. The windmill looks like shit, which I don't know. I get that Napoleon's supposed to be a bad leader, but the farm was meant to be pretty successful at this point. Damn, that explosion. So that's where the budget went, didn't it? Our windmill was ruined. Oh my god, will you fucking stop explaining shit? You show us this massive fireball explosion and then go, Our windmill was ruined! As if we're too retarded to see what's happening on screen. Do you know who has stolen the truck and blown up our windmill? Mmm! Mmm! Snowball! I will say though, it's pretty interesting how both film adaptations had Jones blow up the windmill when that's not who did it in the book. This film was able to give us another pretty banger song, so I'll give it that. Any animal seen giving food to a hen will be punished by death! Guys, that's disgusting. We don't we don't wanna see it. Go back to sleep, my friend. We're just moving some of Jones's camera equipment. 
Guess Jones was an indie filmmaker on the side. Guilty! Guilty! Holy shit, they're fucking hanging them? Okay, that's pretty hardcore. So we get to Boxer getting sent to the glue factory, which the old film does way better. Kind of a trend with this movie. Nobody can save any of us. I could have. How? I'd found a place at the edge of the farm, a good place to hide. I should have taken him there. But you didn't know he was going to die until the very last minute. The van was from the hospital, but had previously been the property of the slaughterer. Well, that clears things up. So the whole point is that the pigs are acting exactly like humans to the point where they are nearly indistinguishable. Now maybe you'll say, oh, that line wasn't meant to be 100% literal, and maybe you're right, but come on, there's a clear difference here. The humans are acting more like pigs than the pigs like humans. I guess that's kind of what they're trying to go with this effect, but I don't know. I think the pigs' transformation to humans should be more obvious here. They should be drinking out of glasses and just acting more like humans. But then again, this movie is still giving off the idea that Pilkerton is apparently manipulating and taking advantage of the pigs, and Napoleon is just too stupid to figure that out. I guess sort of like how Jones was also a drunk and idiot at the beginning of this movie, but that just makes Napoleon seem weaker and honestly a lot less compelling overall as a villain. Just looks like as he got lucky and is now being held afloat by humans, when in reality his ruthless nature and cruelty is what got him where he was. In my opinion, this propaganda film is the best part of the movie. It really gives off this impression of a bleak, oppressive government, and the reveal of Napoleon standing on two legs is honestly really disturbing and incredibly done. It's just plain quality filmmaking, and with the exception of a few silly things like the ducks making plane sounds when they fly over, it perfectly fits the tone of this book. If only the rest of the movie could have been like this. This movie honestly could have redeemed itself if it just ended here and didn't fuck with the ending, but I guess they really couldn't help themselves, could they? Yep, yet another adaptation that gives Orwell the finger so they could come up with their own fan fiction. Eventually, the farm falls apart, which I guess is somewhat accurate to how the actual Soviet history ended, but I don't know, it does feel like a cop out. There are new owners. We will not allow them to make the same mistakes. Yeah, that's what they all say. So I don't know, is there going to be an equivalent of Animal Putin? You'll be the judge. That was the 1999 adaptation of Animal Farm, and sadly, it's not a very good adaptation or film overall. For every step forward this movie takes over the predecessor, it takes several steps back. It adds a bunch of unnecessary aspects that just end up making the movie feel like a boring slog. I seriously don't know how they thought Jones' life was going to compare to animals taking over a farm and turning into an oppressive dictatorship, but apparently they thought we cared just as much for both of those stories stories. Well I didn't, and I'm betting most of you probably didn't either. The puppets and CGI are really poor quality, and the animal training just isn't very convincing. It doesn't help that almost every performance in this movie is bad. Either they act too cartoonish and over the top, or they just put zero effort into the performance. There's very little subtlety, which is kind of the point of an allegory altogether, and in general this movie just doesn't seem to take itself seriously until they throw in stuff like hanging chickens or whatever. The tone is just kind of all over the place. It also over explains way too much with its narration or dialogue or whatever. I really can't tell who this film is made for. This movie is weird because in some ways it's more accurate to the book than the one from 1954, but in many ways it isn't. I would say overall the 1954 version is probably the most accurate because it doesn't have as many weird fan fiction parts as this one does, but both films really aren't great adaptations if we're looking at them critically. Both fuck with the ending for either political reasons or, I don't know, I guess John Stevenson just really wants a happy ending. Both of these movies do feel like children's movie either by dumbing down the source material or by adding childish humor. Also, a sex scene. Even if this was rated R, I'd call it tasteless to put in Orwell's story. I feel like an Animal Farm movie needs to be at least PG-13 rated to accurately adapt the tone and themes. I know it has talking animals, but there's really nothing about this story that's kid-friendly. It's dark, miserable, and it paints a painful picture of the types of real-life oppressive governments we've seen throughout history. Don Bluth once said something among the lines of, you can show a kid anything as long as it has a happy ending. Well, Animal Farm does not have a happy ending. 
and lazily tacking one on doesn't make up for the bleak experience we went through. It just cheaps the effectiveness of it. While neither of these adaptations are god awful, they still leave a lot to be desired. Maybe Andy Serkis will do a better job someday, I don't know. I would say you're better off sticking with the 1954 film and maybe parts of the 1999 one. Maybe if someone could edit out the boring filler out and only keep the parts specifically related to the book, the film would be better off. I do really like their renditions of Beast of England, or in this case Beast of the World, but I don't think I can truly recommend the 1999 version. If you do watch the 1954 version, you're better off reading the book first and using it as a companion piece. Neither film will give you the same experience, and neither are going to help you pass your English class. Honestly, fuck the movies, just read the book and be done with it. Well, that's pretty much all I have to say about the Animal Farm adaptations. It's a shame both ended up being disappointments, but I guess that's just how these types of things turn out. Among us.